So after once you have login, click on the courses. There you can see course list. And in this course list, you can see wide range of courses. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 4th July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see the first topic. So in yesterday's lecture, so many students, they commented that to discuss different articles from the different newspapers and different sources so that there will be comprehensive coverage of current affairs of that day. So we are going to follow that. So here the first article is talking about water insecurities. So already you know that there are a number of metropolitan cities across the world, not only in India, they are facing this water insecurity. They are not getting proper drinking water. So this article which mainly says that Asia's largest cities, including Delhi, they lack water security. There is no proper security of water even in Delhi. So now let us try to see this topic. So this topic is important from our governance point of view. So if you see context, it mainly says that. So recent findings by the scientists of Southeast Asian countries, they mainly say that here urban cities in this Asian, okay, in this Asian countries, so there is no proper water security. So even some mega cities like Tokyo, Shanghai, Delhi, they are the symbols of rise of new Asian century. As they are three biggest in the world, they are the engines of economic growth. Actually, you know that world mega cities like for example, especially in the Southeast Asian countries, we can talk about uh, Tokyo, which is uh, in Japan, and you can talk about Shanghai in China and Delhi in India. So these are the three capital cities and these are the three global mega cities. Actually, in these cities, you are mainly facing water insecurity. Actually, these cities, they are the engines of economic growth of that so and so uh, respective country. And even they are producing billions of economic activity for their residents. But now, they are facing a problem like there is no proper availability of fresh water for their daily needs. So if you see details, it mainly says that, so why there is this water insecurity? So what might be the causes? Because of low water efficiency. So first important reason here is there is low water efficiency. So actually the large amount of water which is mainly used for this agriculture production. So in India, we are mainly using large amount of water for agriculture. So as you all know that primary activity in India, it is agriculture. And many a times we can say, so the, our economy which is mainly based on this agriculture or agriculture based economy. So here comparatively, we are using large amount of water which is mainly used for agriculture production and water efficiency is also among the lowest in the world. So how we are efficiently using this water? So this is very, very low and there is also low water productivity which mainly results in low crop yields as well. So there is no proper water efficiency and even though when we are using large amount of water for the agriculture, so the productivity is very much less. And if you're talking about second important reason, that is urban pollution. Yes, now we are talking about urban pollution in especially big cities and metropolitan cities, there is large amount of population. And in this metropolitan cities, so mostly we can see industries will be present in the outskirts of the cities. And these industries and factories, they will be releasing their effluents into the nearby water bodies. And that led to the pollution of the water bodies which are present in these areas. Okay, water problems are common in big cities and we can see there is a degradation of environment because of population, there is high population and even there are economic activities are mainly going on. And in the cities, in the outskirts especially, we can see industrial growth and these industrial discharge will be released into water bodies without proper treatment. And one important problem here is also sewage. And next one is climate change. So due to climate change, now we are facing extreme droughts and in some areas extreme floods. Okay, so it, this mainly exaggerates the problem of water insecurity. And if you're talking about what are the suggestions that we can go. So first one here is the policy intervention. Yes, we need to come up with a good policy and we need to implement that policy for the larger public good. And we need to cover 
even integrated urban water security assessment net framework and we can go for city urban water security as well so in this way here whenever we are coming up with different policies and that will be helpful for the people and we can try to minimize at least some percentage of uh, reduction of the problem and next one is we can use technology yes especially if you are talking about some case studies recently Th thailand which mainly came up with whatsapp that is mainly based on web based water security assessment tool so by using this tool whatsapp so we can evaluate so where the city which mainly stands by measuring the five distinct aspects of urban water security for example we can talk uh, we can also go for assessment of water supply sanitation water productivity water environment and as well as water governance so these are some important areas that we can assess by using this whatsapp so if you're talking about what will be the local solutions so if you're talking about local solutions so here we can go for improving of livelihoods of their people and we can support continued growth and if you're talking about one more important case study we can talk about bangkok so bangkok which mainly adopted in incentives for the water management and for the treatment of waste water at household level okay so at household level if the family which is going for the no proper treatment of the waste water that is domestic used water then they will be getting some incentives so in this way we can we can uh, we can give some incentives for the people to do to go for this treatment of water such that uh, that will be helpful for the people and next one here is we can go for planning and implementation yes there is urgent need to stop water supply losses for example leaking leakages of pipes so especially in our state telangana so in hyderabad and especially in some rural areas we have one drinking water supply program that is mission bagiratha so in that scheme what happened is yes, government had lent a good amount of pipes and government which mainly started providing water for the households but what is the problem here is if there is any leakage of pipes happening means so lot of amount of water will be will be wasted okay and it will be like a big fountain and sometimes if that is not uh, corrected within couple of hours then what happen it will be leading to the formation of a dam there dam and reservoir like that thing so because of this yes whenever there is a water supply which is happening through the pipes yes we need to ensure that there is no leakaging of pipes so that will increase the productivity of that so and so scheme and as well as aim of that scheme and we can go for enhancing of financial sustainability through water tariffs and we can go for installing installing of this new metering new metering devices and even we can go for detecting of unauthorized usage in water pipelines and we can go for using of monitoring the systems so in this way we can take some steps especially for the effective uh, effective implementation of schemes and as well as policies and we can address this challenge of water insecurities in this metropolitan cities or mega cities in the south east asian countries and now let us try to see next topic is regarding india argentina relations so title says prime minister narendra modi meet president of argentina and they discuss issues including trade and investment so this topic is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your gs paper 2 so now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that prime minister he met a uh, president of this argentina and they mainly talked some important issues between india and argentina so if you see details it mainly says that actually this is the first bilateral meeting between the two leaders and actually they reviewed the progress in implementing bilateral strategic partnership which established in 2019 So in 2019 strategic partnership which mainly established between India and Argentina and they mainly started reviewing the progress in implementing of this bilateral strategic partnership at actually this bilateral strategic partnership which mainly came up in 2019 so if we talk about discussions they mainly talked about some important and key areas of concerns between India and Argentina that is regarding trade and investment they talked about south south cooperation and they take, talked about even pharmaceutical sector as you all know india which is doing good and excelling in this pharmaceutical sector and they mainly talked about this climate action renewable energy nuclear medicine electric mobility defense cooperation agriculture food security traditional medicine cultural cooperation 
So these are some important areas of discussion between this India and Argentina. So we are talking about recent facts regarding India-Argentina relations from 2019 onwards. Let us see a timeline. So what are the developments that we can see between India and Argentina? So we are talking about political lines. So India which mainly opened trade commission in in Buenos Aires, okay, in 1943, and later it converted into Embassy of India in 1949. During the visit, both the countries they decided to elevate the cooperation and strategic partnership, especially in some key areas, okay, which will be helpful for prosperity of the both the countries. So, if you see where is this Argentina is located, so here this is a map of South America. Here you can see Guyana, Suriname, Venezuela. Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Brazil and here you have French Guiana and below this Bolivia you can see here Chile shaped okay that is Chile and beside that we have this Argentina and here we have Uruguay and Paraguay okay so these are the countries which are present in the South America and they are very very easy to remember okay so please try to focus on this and here there is one river so let me know which is the river which is mainly flowing in this region. And now let us try to see economic and commercial engagement between Argentina and India. So in last 10 years the bilateral trade which is more than doubled and this bilateral trade here is US dollar 3 billion. And there are also possibility for significant increase in many sectors for example agriculture, metals, minerals, oil and gas and even pharmaceutical, chemicals, motor vehicles and as well services. So in this area there is a, some significant improvement in the relationship. And if you are talking about agriculture, as you all know Ag Argentina which is a powerhouse of agriculture and India sees it is an important partner for its food security as well. And in the visit, in the recent visit in 2019, so they mainly talked about agriculture cooperation and they talked about exchange of technology and this technology that have some focus on increasing of food productivity and next one here is reducing of uh, post harvest losses and to build climate resilience. So in these areas they already had some talks. And if you are talking about mining, Argentina which is part of lithium triangle. Okay, Argentina which is part of lithium triangle and mainly produce about 54 percentage of this world's lithium reservoir. As you all know lithium which is very much important for electric vehicles and even we have we need this lithium ion batteries so that will be very important. So for that lithium is very important and the source of lithium here is Argentina. And now let us try to see next topic. So this is the image I collected from the Hindu today. So here I found this image which is very much interesting because yesterday I went to one shop and they said that not to me but other customers they said that so we are not providing any plastic covers. So if you want to take the goods okay, from our shop you have to get the bag with you and you have to take the uh, goods in, in your bag. So we are not going to provide any cover. So the reason they said that yes government has banned this single use plastics from June, July 1st onwards. So if we are providing any covers means yes police they can file a case on our shop and that will lead to closure of our shop. So we need to take some measures so that we are not going to give any plastic covers to anyone from today. Okay so here whenever there is stringed punishment stringent punishment which is mainly given to the people means yes there will be some attitudinal change will become in the people so here whenever you're talking about attitude change you can talk about this abc component affective behavior and cognitive okay model so here whenever there we are talking about rewards and punishments yes that will leads to bring some attitudinal change in the people so now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail. So now let us try to talk about what is the meaning of the single use plastic. So the name itself it is saying that single use that means so these are the plastic items they can be used and used once and they can be discarded. For example you can talk about packaging of items, packaging bottles like shampoo bottles, detergents, cosmetics and some polythene bags, face mask and coffee cups cling films, trash bags, food packaging. So these are some important examples of this single use plastics. So what is the status of the single use plastics in India? So according to this Mindro Foundation report which mainly said that single use plastic which mainly account for 
वन थर्ड ऑफ प्लास्टिक विच मेनली प्रोड्यूस ग्लोबली सो येस वी कैन सी द प्लास्टिक आइटम्स दैट वी कैन यूज इवन इन आवर इवन इन आवर हाउस होल्स लाइक वी विल बी यूजिंग प्लास्टिक बॉटल्स एंड इन द इन आवर रिफ्रिजरेटर सम स्ट्रेस विच वी यूज दैट आवर प्लेट ऑफ प्लास्टिक एंड इवन वी कैन यूज सम प्लास्टिक एयर टाइट कंटेनर्स एज वेल बट दे आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक सो दिस सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक मीन्स दे विल बी हैविंग अ वेरी वेरी लेस थिकनेस एंड दे विल बी नॉट डिग्रेडेड ईजीली एंड फॉर द प्रोसिंग ऑल्स इट विल बी टेकिंग मच मोर टाइम सो हियर दिस मिंद्रो फाउंडेशन रिपोर्ट सेट दैट वन थर्ड ऑफ प्लास्टिक विच इज मेनली प्रोड्यूस ग्लोबली सो दिस वन थर्ड विच इज मेनली कंटेन दिस सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक एंड इंडिया विच मेनली रैंक टॉप हंड्रेड कंट्रीज विच आर मेनली यूज इन दिस सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक एंड इंडिया रैंक इज नाइन्टी फोर्थ एंड टॉप थ्री कंट्रीज विच मेनली यूज दिस सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक इज सिंगापुर ऑस्ट्रेलिया नेशनल्स ओमान सो इंडिया इज डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्शन ऑफ दिस सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक इट इज एट मिलियन मेट्रिक टन्स एनुअली एंड इंडिया इज पर कैपिटल जनरेशन हियर इज फोर के जेस सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट आर द कॉज ऑफ कॉन्शियस रिगार्ड दिस सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक सो दे आर मेनली हैविंग सम हार्मफुल इम्पैक्ट ऑन आर एनवायरमेंट सो सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक दे ऑल्सो अकाउंट अकाउंट फॉर द मेजोरिटी ऑफ दिस प्लास्टिक विच मेनली डिस्कार्डेड अबाउट वन थर्टी मिलियन वन थर्टी मिलियन मेट्रिक टन्स okay of this globe of this uh, single use plastic that will be released globally and actually some amount of this plastic will be buried and as well as some amount will be burned in landfills so whenever even when we are going for burning of this plastic that will be also leads to air pollution and if you are talking about greenhouse gas emissions so one of the current trajectory of production which has been projected that single use plastic could amount for about 5 to 10 percentage of this greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 so this is one important data that you have to make a note and if you are talking about which are the items banned so cpcb that is central pollution control board which mainly announced that ban on earbuds so on this earbuds also we will be having this plastic sticks and this one is balloon straws candy ice cream sticks cutlery items including plates cups glasses forks spoons knife trays sweet boxes invitation cards and cigarette packs etc so they are mainly bought mainly banned which are under 100 microns and next one here is polythene bags so the ministry which had already banned polythene bags under the 75 microns in the september 2021 so now we came up with this 120 microns in december 20 uh, by 2022 of december and if we talk about sachets according to this plastic management rules 2016 so there is also a complete ban on the sachets including plastic material for storing packing and as well as uh, for selling of good ka tobacco pan masala etc and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding gi tag targeting gi tag mayurbhanj superfood and chakni to find more tables so this article which is mainly talking about ant chakni so actually this ants are nothing but weaver ants so actually earlier i used to follow tribes of india program which used to publish in rajya sabha tv so if you uh, search now i think you may also get uh, some playlist of this tribes of india so in that tribes especially in one tribes i can't recall the name right now so in that uh, i saw that uh, i saw that uh, this ant chutney so how it is prepared and how they are serving so what is the benefits of this ant chutney so they explained very well actually one woman she will be going there okay to collect this ants and after collecting this ants they will be bringing that ants which is made up of a wooden wooden bowl okay and uh, after that she will be adding some ginger some chai so spices like chilies etc and she will be making that chutney so, so that chutney is called as kai chutney so if you follow this uh, tribes of india channel that will be useful for even your anthropology and you will be understanding what are the exact problems you are facing practically so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that weaver ants are popular among the people mostly for the tribes so tribal people they will be dependent on this weaver ants so now let us try to see what is that dish so that, that dish is called as kai chutney or ant chutney so actually this savory food item which is very much rich in proteins calcium zinc vitamin b12 iron magnesium potassium sodium copper fiber and 18 amino acids 
so this mainly helps to boost our immune system so in that video i i i uh, i watched that video and in that video they said that they will be preparing this ant chutney and they will be giving this ant chutney for the people who are suffering from the malaria especially because that will be helpful for boosting of their immunity so after research they found that yes this food which is very much rich in proteins calcium zinc vitamin b12 iron magnesium and there is no need of taking any multivitamin tablet so because it is having different uh, different things like minerals like calcium is there zinc is there and vitamin b12 iron magnesium potassium sodium etc so it is the best medicine i can say and if you're talking about details it mainly says that in odisha scientists they are now fine tuning their research to make presentation for this gi that is geographical indication registry of this sky chutney so here now these people they want to get this sky chutney to be a geographically indicated okay so here whenever there is a gi tag which mainly gave to this one so type of thing means that will help to develop the hygienic protocol and that will also enhance the reputation or uh, and as well as a value for the local products and as well as a support for the local businesses as well and if we are talking about the facts regarding this weaver ant so the scientific name is osiophila sum uh, samaragdina okay so it is a scientific name of this weaver ant and they are abundantly found in this mayur bunch throughout the year and they make the nest with the leaves of host trees and if we are talking about gi indication so gi geographical indication is primarily an agricultural natural or manufactured product which mainly originated from the definite definite geographical territory and if you are talking about why we need this gi so this gi will be helpful for the assurance of quality and as well as distinctiveness from the other areas so i want to give you one main question that is what is the geographical indication tag and what is its significance so try to answer this question within 150 words and now let us try to see one more interesting topic that is regarding custodial deaths so technology is no panacea for this custodial death so this article which is mainly talking about technology and custodial death so this article is important from your gs paper to under governance point of view and now let us try to see here this topic in a very great detail so if you are talking about this custodial deaths so india has a grim record in police uh, brutality and custodial violence so what happens so what is this custodial death so in simple words in layman terms i will make you understand what is custodial death so for example if you take a one person who did some crime okay for example he murdered another person let us take so he murdered this person and what happened so this family members will be going to give the complaint on this so and so person that yes my family member has been killed by this so and so person x and people and policemen they will be coming and they will be taking this so and so person and he will be arrested so after arrest they he will be kept in the jail so whenever this person who is kept in the jail what happen so here there will be the some violence that is mainly seen the police brutality which is mainly seen so the police they were they are going to give the beatings and they are going to beat this person okay so because of this we can see there will be the first degree treatment second degree treatment and that's third degree treatment so they will be giving this so because of this torture and brutality sometimes that so and so person who is arrested who may be died in this uh, jail itself so this is called as custodial death so if we talking about data regarding this custodial death so between this 2001 and 2018 so there were 17027 people they died in this police custody but out of this only 26 policemen they were convicted for such deaths and if we talking about some more important points so custodial deaths they are common despite enormous time and money being spent on training police personnel to embrace uh, this scientific methods of investigation so custodial deaths are mainly common okay despite enormous time and as well as money which is mainly spent so actually what happen once the people who are selected or recruited for police either it may be state police or central police then they will be giving a lot of training and government they are mainly going to spend large amount of money for their uh, Uh, for their uh, hostel facility and for providing the food and as well as for training so even though there are number of uh, enormous enormous time and even money which is mainly spent for the training of this police is now we are seeing some impact on this custodial death yes there is no decreasing of this custodial deaths so why because this police persons they are humans they are from different backgrounds and as well as with different perspectives 
so we're talking about use of technology yes men to decrease this custodial debts we can use this technology so now let us try to see some technological solutions to deal with this tech with this uh, custodial debts the first important solution here is we can use body cameras and as well as automated external defibrillators okay so we can use this body cameras and as well as automatic external defibrillators and not only that we can go for ddts that is deception detection test so we can use technology such as polygraphs we can use narco analysis and as well as brain mapping so this will be also very much helpful for getting information and next one here is we can use this bfs okay so bfs it is nothing but body related test and we can identify the perpetrators and as well as we can help the innocents to come out of this cases the next one is we can go for uh, using of some lab related test and as well as field test okay so here this is the thing which mainly used by even us navy us navy whenever they are using that they found that there are no errors there are no false positives and as such there is no false negatives so if we are talking about this technology so recently in 2010 that is in 2010 selvi versus state of karnataka so in this uh, case supreme court which mainly said that only only with the consent we can go for performing of this narco analysis and as well as polygraphs and as well as brain mapping test so without consent we should not go for taking of this test so this is the thing which mainly said in this selvi versus state of karnataka case and if you're talking about this police departments so police departments you are increasingly using robots robots for surveillance and as well as bomb detection so especially for the bomb detection and for the surveillance yes we can use this robots such that we can decrease the casualties and if you see these robots they are also equipped with artificial intelligence and as well as sensor technology and that will helpful mainly to build a rapport with the suspects and we can go for utilizing of technologies for example flattering shame and as well as coercion so that can be decreased okay so robots they can be equipped with this artificial intelligence and as well as sensor technology so such that it can go and identify the suspects and next one here is so recently here researchers at this university of arizona so they mainly created automated inter interrogation technology that is called as avatar so in this way we can also use the technology so finally we can also use artificial intelligence machine learning etc so they can be used as tools of interrogation rather than rather than using of violence or brutality so artificial intelligence they have the ability they can detect the human emotions and they can predict their behavior and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding wake up call so actually this article is mainly talking about land slide in manipur so what can be done now so that is we are going to talk about post disaster management so this topic is important from your gs paper 3 that is from disaster management point of view so we are talking about context mainly says that so land slide which mainly occurred in the last week in two pool area in manipur snowy district so in manipur there is a one land slide which mainly happened it is a one of the very severest land slide okay that led to the toll of 37 people and 28 people they are missing and they are trapped below this debris so we are talking about this disaster so this is a one of the tragic disaster because whenever this land flood happened so there was like one river okay i river which is mainly flowing and because of this land slide so this river has been blocked and that led to the formation of this dam like structure and if we are talking about this land slide which is mainly defined as the movement of mass of rock debris or earth down a slope under the direct influence of gravity so what have land slide means nothing but it is a movement of mass of rock and debris and earth that will be coming down so there comes under this rapid movements for example you can talk about falls topple slides uh, flows and as well as spreads so we talking about the land slide hazard zone nation of india so especially in this himalayan region and in this north eastern region and some regions in this western ghats and some regions in this eastern ghats they are very much vulnerable to this land slides so you have to know that and the himalayan states and even in the in the other states in this north eastern states 
and even in the Kerala. So these are the areas which mainly are prone to this landslides. And relatively the higher number of casualties that are kept accompanying these landslides. So this is the thing which mainly said by Environment Ministry. And Environment Ministry which mainly says that what is the reason behind this landslide? It is because of anthropogenical activities that is human induced activities or human induced landslide that we are mainly seeing now. So if we are talking about the causes, so causes here is because of slopes of construction and widening the road and whenever we are going for developmental activities and construction materials and we are going for this fragile lithography complex. Okay, so these are some important causes. And if you are talking about what is the need, the uncertain nature of rains with the monsoon being more intense this year compared to that of prediction. So it also added to the problem. So what happened the prediction which mainly says that we are going to get a good rainfall but here the prediction is very uh, the rainfall which mainly happened here is very very in intensive. So because of this intensive rainfall that led to the mainly like saturation of soil and that mainly come down. So if you are talking about the what is the need the need here is we need early warning stations okay such that we can go for we can go for reducing of scale of uh, such disaster and even other deployed across the vulnerable states. So now let us try to say today's question. The first one is regarding Buddhism. So the first one is first statement here is according to Buddha, pre Buddhism present in determined by the past actions, Buddha rejected the existence of God. So but Buddha he didn't make any statement regarding existence of God or not. So here one only is the correct answer. And next question is regarding Vedic economy. So pastoralism, pastoralism, it is a main uh, substance uh, activity, but it is mainly seen in earlier Vedic period, but not later. In later Vedic period, we came up with cultivation. And the people in the later Vedic period grew barley and rice, but they grew only rice, but not barley. So correct option is neither one nor two. And these are the today's questions. The first one is regarding Harappan pottery and second one it is regarding Kashmir Valley. So please try to read the statements and give me the correct option in the comment box. And now I want to make an announcement. So we in Rathor says we are going to start this mains answering practice of this July batch today. Okay, today 10 o'clock. So here this course will be going to be started. So the interested students they can go for admissions uh, to, they can go for taking of this ad admissions for this uh, mains answering course and this admissions will be open for one week so please try to ensure that you are mainly joining this course that will be very very beneficial so apart from that we also launched a foundation course for this upsc csc 2023 and 2024 so this course is also very very beneficial and if you want to watch demo videos so please visit our website rathos ice academy and there you can watch the demo videos and now let us try to see the today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So before that, let us, uh, if you want to get the PDF of this class, so you can join the Telegram channel. Link is in description box. And now let us try to see the Hindu newspaper PDF. So actually this is today's Hindu. So here the date here is July 4th and this is Delhi edition. So first article which is mainly talking about tribal women. So here if you are mainly from anthropology related optional background, you might be knowing about the syllabus of this GS paper, uh, sorry anthropology paper too. So there you have to know, uh, there, 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 there is one topic regarding this problems of this tribal people. And so there you can add this article as a case study. So recently one tribal woman in Madhya Pradesh set a blaze over the land dispute and later on this victim is mainly taken to the hospital. Okay. So, here you have to know about rights of the people and rights of uh, tribal people and you can talk about this FCRA Forest uh, Right Conservation Act. So, these are the, all the some dimensions that you have to think about. And next article it is regarding Odisha woman has a forest named after her. So, actually the name of the forest is Sarojini Vana. So, Sarojini Vana it is not on the memorial of this freedom fighter that is Sarojini Naidu but it is mainly uh, based on one woman okay she is 42 years of uh, age and actually she is a homegrown change maker and because of this uh, which has mainly uh, lead to okay which has been gone to beyond the call of duty to create nature nurture of a forest and on denuded patch in the bone in the bonai forest division so actually in the bonai forest division she came up with the planting of plants 
and actually this area which is a why we are going for this of uh, afforestation in this area because it is a one of the f mining affected area and the forest division which made razor fund to raise a small forest on this denuded patch and she mainly went for plantation for a daily wage of uh, 350 rupees and every plant in the area which mainly appears to be her in her orbit and this is about this topic actually here whenever we are doing something good for the environment and as well as ecosystem yes indeed the awards and rewards will be there and if you move forward leave this daily page and you can directly move to this uh, editorial page so in this editorial i discussed about this landslide topic and there is one article that is regarding the easing price pressures that will be helpful for derailing of economy and here this article says that policy makers need to focus on this i discussed about this custodial debts topic and if you move forward there is one interesting article regarding this uh, electrical safety so we need an urgent national plan on electrical safety so actually you know that yes india which is mainly growing fast after independence and now you can see each and every individual they are having this electric bulb uh, electric uh, bulbs and even some electric gadgets are present here and if you are talking about electricity supply so in india we are seeing that 24 by 7 electricity supply and uh, which, which we can see and here we can have the one challenges like the providing of 24 by 7 electricity that is through carbon neutrality by 2070. So if we are talking about raising fatalities data, this recent NCRB data that is a national crimes record bureau data which mainly said that which mainly said that there are about 2957 deaths and 0.36 deaths per lakh population 1990. So there is a very very huge rate of increasing of this electrification related accidents. So here now we need to focus on how to decrease this uh, accidents. Okay, so here the accidents they are like not just happen happen but they are caused here. So analysis which mainly says that 90% of the area, 90% uh, of the population they are mainly dying because of this electrocution accidents. Okay, and next one here is geographically most of the electrical accident which may appear to be taking place in the rural areas and most considering uh, the rapid urbanization and as well as poor urbanization localities etc and if you're talking about one more thing here is electrocution due to the accident which mainly contacts with the life conduct with the life conductors and as well as immediate cause for accidents and the majority of the cases so we need to take the immediate steps here so we're talking about the steps yes how can we go for safety checks and balances so there is a need of safety regulations okay we need to come up with the policy interventions and we need to focus on our revenue collections and as well as uh, we can go for fault rebates etc and next one here is so environmental safety is the public interest okay it is a public interest challenge so we need to focus on that safety interest first and if you're talking about some more important steps that we can take here is we can go for uh, better data collection better introducing of uh, safety aspects in the nation in the national programs, strengthening of safety instruments, etc., and the need of our E is a national program to reduce electrical accidents. So we need to come up with this uh, national program such that we can decrease electrical accidents in this sector. We can go for resource allocation and robust monitoring and verification mechanism where in which districts there is high amount of this uh, accident which is mainly going on. In that places we can come up with the uh, new policies. And if you move forward, this article is mainly talking about plastic pollution. I discuss this topic. And in the text and context, there is article regarding India and Russia defense cooperation. Now, recent times we are seeing there is some strains in the India-Russia defense cooperation. So, what happened here? So, because of this uh, Russia-Ukraine crisis, so now we are seeing there is some all-time low regarding this defense cooperation between India and uh, Russia here. So, what happened? Officials mainly stated that. While some timeline lapses and shipping delays are which are mainly happening and that would not be any dent to armies and as well as uh, operational preparedness. And if you are talking about next target is regarding NIA, so because of this Udaipur case in the news, yes there is a national investigation agency which is mainly seen in the news. And this NIA which mainly constituted in the wake of 26 by 11 Mumbai terror attacks okay, in November 2008. 
and this agency which mainly came into existence in December 2018 and this NIA which is a central agency and this agency which mainly investigates all offenses affecting security, sovereignty and as well as integrity of the country. Okay, so this is about this uh, topic and you can easily go to this topic once. And next topic it is from your page number 13. Okay, page number 11. You can see one article regarding this NHRC seeks up report on check mask case. So here you have to know where are these check masks located in which state. That is very important. And if you move forward, here you can see not only Bengal, center owes MG Narega funds uh, to many other states. So there is delaying of releasing of funds for this MG Narega. So because of this, this is in news and actually this MG Narega which mainly stands for Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme and which mainly talks about 100 days of employment, okay, especially in rural areas. So there was face some problem regarding this financial crunch. And next article is regarding GST decisions upset diary formats. So what happened? So diary formats are very much upset because so recently 47th GST meeting which mainly held. So they said that they are going to impose 5% of tax on the diary products like pre-packed milk, pre-labeled -lab, pre um, curd, uh, pre curd, etc. Lassi, buttermilk, etc. And now it said that they are going to increase this uh, uh, this uh, equipments okay the cost the gst on this diary equipments that is 12 percentage and as does 18 percentage 12 percentage to 18 percentage so because of this it is one of the cause of concern for the diary farmers and if you move forward this about uh, ant chutney so i discuss this topic and these are some important articles that happened in our today's hindu newspaper so i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to rathor science academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and please try to join the courses uh, for example main translating factors foundational course and as well as other individual courses that are made available in our rathor science academy and try to join the telegram channel you will be getting some updates of current affairs also so by this i'm concluding thank you so much